I'm going to be covering a decent amount of politics until the election. This is the most important election in American history. And because we are living in the end times, and because we are living in uncertain times, this will be the case in every future election as well. We are going to want to get involved in politics because as Christians, we need all the help we can get in these times. I saw someone post something on social media that said, you cannot vote away the book of Revelation. And that is true. The end times are coming. And there's nothing we can do to stop that. It's biblical prophecy. However, at the same time, we can slow down that so that we have more opportunity to preach the gospel. Over 2 billion people in the world have never heard the gospel message. And Jesus said, the gospel must be preached to all nations, and then the end shall come. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how Christians should approach politics, and we're going to look at the critical issues that are at stake in this next election. We're going to go over all the major points based on polls that the Americans find are the most important issues. Hi, my name is Joshua Simone. Welcome to my channel. The ministry is called Torn Curtain is because when Jesus died and rose again, the curtain in the Old Testament temple was tore from top to bottom. We now have a new covenant, a better covenant, and direct access to a relationship with God through Jesus' death and resurrection. Torn Curtain is a nonprofit media organization with goals of reaching 1 billion people through video content with the gospel message. I have two other channels, one for news and politics and one for evangelism. And I'm going to blend current events, theology, psychology, politics with applications for Christian living. I have about 20 years worth of experience in churches in various roles and have degrees in counseling and theology. I will blend all of this to provide a unique perspective that will be different from other YouTube channels. 20 years ago, I would have never preached on politics, but today I don't see how you don't preach on politics. I am a business owner and frequently lobby at Washington. While I am there, I always try to sneak in some Christianity as well. But let me show you some pictures. Okay, so here is me meeting with Senator Ted Cruz, who's a, tech, who's a senator in Texas. Just a really, really awesome guy, down to earth and Bible-believing Christian. So here's a picture with me with Senator Gillibrand from New York. We need to work with politicians both on the left and the right as Christians, as business owners, and to be able to accomplish our purposes. She's a wonderful woman as well. For those of you who have spiritual discernment, spiritual eyes, there is a war going on right now for the soul of America and for the soul of the global community. And it's a spiritual war. Ephesians says that we wrestle not of flesh and blood with people with bodies, but we wrestle against demonic forces. No one should be on the sideline for this battle. And we as Christians are called to fight the good fight of faith. And sometimes that is done in the political arena. A mature, spirit-filled Christian using their discernment to rightfully see the times. And a large majority of these spirit-filled Christians, we're all on the same page as what's going on right now. So please hit the subscribe button. I promise to bring you the best Christian content. I'm going after tough and controversial subjects. Many will see that as being divisive, but my heart is for reformation and to see the church be the best that it can be. I'm going to give you the good stuff, no cookie cutter stuff. So please help me get to 100,000 subscribers. 87% of my audience has not subscribed. And that would really help this channel send a message to YouTube that they should send people. So also tap the bell and select all to make sure that you get notified when I release a video. Only 3% of people have this on. So both sides of the political war that we're in have their strengths and weaknesses. And political candidates have strength and weaknesses as well. But there is always one side that is more right than other. In November, we only have one vote. So sitting this one out is really not an option. We have to only, we have only one choice in who to pick for. And that doesn't mean that that side will be perfect. And it doesn't mean that political candidate will be perfect. We all fall short of God's glory at the end of the day. But I believe that there is only one choice in this upcoming election, and I will attempt to prove this in this video. Just to clarify a few things on politics, God's kingdom always comes before culture. Jesus said very clearly when talking to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. 
The only government that will be perfect is Jesus' government. Jesus is the only one with perfect leadership. He will set up peace, and his government will know no end. He will defeat the devil and all his enemies, and his robe will be dipped in blood, and he will put all his enemies under his feet. He will put the devil, his demons, and rebels in the lake of fire for all eternity. Only then will we have perfect government and peace. His kingdom always comes first, as it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you in Matthew 6. But we shouldn't ignore culture either. We live in this world, and we have a duty to be a good steward of this planet as long as we're here. Politics shapes our world, and we have civic duties to attend to, like voting and jury duty, which is part of being a citizen of this country. The church should be involved in politics. If Christians stay out of politics, then the others will gladly use it to their advantage. And we've seen this a lot in the last few years. We have lost a lot of ground by the church staying out of politics. And we lost a lot of ground by staying as the silent majority. Usually conservatives are quiet, hard workers, and they don't voice their opinions. But in these days, we need to be speak up, we need to get involved, we need to be active in politics. Here's where the problem comes. When Christians get overly focused on politics, where the, all they do is talk about politics, and they forget about Jesus. Some even go into extreme ways of thinking that Christians should take over politics. And this is egregious error. This is called Christian nationalism. There is a separation of church and state for good reasons. The church should be the church, and the state should be the state. Christians should never try to take over politics. And every time that they did this in the past, it was a complete disaster. Think about the Crusades, where thousands of people were killed for religious wars. But we should be involved in politics. But we never want to let it be more important than Jesus or let it become an idol. Many do let it become an idol. Some are trying to use the term Christian nationalist as a label to try to silence Christians and get them to shut up. Do not fall for this. We need to be louder than ever. We need to stand up for our beliefs. We need to be active in politics. It's okay to love your country. And a matter of fact, to not love your country doesn't make sense either. I'm in New York City, and all over the place, people proudly wave and display their flags in the countries they are from. For instance, in New York City, there's a lot of Puerto Rican people here. They display their flags proudly and unapologetic. Sure, we have to acknowledge some of the sins of our nation's past. We haven't done everything right. But many today hate America. There's an anti-Christian sentiment rising up. And this is more dangerous to me than Christian nationalism. It's okay to be excited about your country. It's okay to be excited about a political candidate. And if you echo those two things, many will cry Christian nationalist, Christian nationalist. Or even worse than that, white Christian nationalist. We should be involved in politics. We shouldn't try to take over politics. And we shouldn't try to merge the church and the state. But you have every right to express your belief on politics and your faith for Jesus. The warning here is clear. Do not put politics over Jesus. Jesus is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Many people will point to certain candidates being idols. Good examples of this in recent times are Barack Obama and Donald Trump. And sometimes these people do come idols. And in the last election, it was clear that many Christians made Donald Trump an idol. However, God does use some people more than he uses others. God gives gifts as he sees fit. Notice, I wasn't in the Olympics this year. And I wasn't upset that I wasn't in the Olympics this year. I'm just not that gifted. But I'm gifted in other areas. That's why I'm doing a podcast. Because we recognize that a political candidate is extremely gifted or a great leader doesn't mean we are making an idol out of them, because we're acknowledging that. We make idols when we think someone is our savior. When we think both Trump and Obama were president, neither one of them saved us from anything. And neither one of them will save us from anything in the future. Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. God is the creator, and men are created beings. Trump and Obama, Camilla Harris, and all involved have nothing on the creator. But we can be excited about a political candidate and even acknowledge great leadership. This isn't idolatry. Let's also be clear. 
God can use unbelievers to accomplish his purposes. He often uses flawed individuals for his glory. Those flawed individuals can lead in government, but usually they are not able to lead into the, in the church because of moral requirements set first in 1 Timothy 3, that elders and overseers should be above reproach. But we are not voting for the pastor of the United States. Many people are pointing out the flaws of the political candidates and stuff, and rightfully so. Some of that stuff is true, and we should acknowledge it. If we look closely at any politician, we will find a lot of flaws in them. I love my country. I love my candidate. I personally am voting Donald Trump 2024, and I love Jesus Christ. I am not a Christian nationalist because I don't believe that Christians should take over the government. And I don't believe that the church and state should merge. Lastly, many Christians are foolishly putting personality before policy. When it comes to politics, we are voting for the policies that that politician would intact. We are not voting on whether we like the person's personality. This is not a popularity contest. We are voting. We are not voting again for the pastor of the United States. We are voting for a president. When I go to a doctor, I want the best doctor. And sometimes they have a good personality. Sometimes they don't. If they do have a good personality, this is a plus. I want a doctor that has the best education and best experience. Their personality is not as important to me. I do not necessarily need to like my doctor, or again, that would be a great plus. As long as I get better and they know what they're doing and they're competent. Many people think you have to like the presidential, the presidential candidates. Voting is not sending a, a, a valentine. We are not doing speed dating here. We are voting for a president. And the last time a Christian was president in the United States in Jimmy Carter, it was a total disaster. The highest inflation rates in human, in American history. We are voting for policy, not personality. And it's not important if the pr presidential candidate is a committed Christian, or in many cases, even a moral person. When I was a teen, I went through a pretty rebellious stage. And the thing that kept me alive was having a strong father in my house. He wasn't always very nice. And often he seemed mean. He said almost no to everything when I was going through that stage. But I thank God for him now because he saved my life and kept me safe. So sometimes what we see as being mean or strong or good leadership often is something that these people have our best interests in mind, but it hurts at the moment. Doesn't feel good at the moment, but later on down the line, you're like, man, I'm so thankful that that person stood up for me when I couldn't see the truth. Someone's morality should be taken into consideration, absolutely. But the president doesn't have to be a Christian, and a large majority of Christians are not, a large majority of politicians are not real Christians. We are voting for policy, not personality. This isn't the high school prom king we're voting for. Will this president's policies leave this country better off? And will this person's policies leave the church better off? Are two questions that we need to be asking ourselves. We should not be overly focused on personality. Politics do matter. Because if we have a president who has a heart for Christians, then it'll be easier for us to build churches and preach the gospel. If we have people that are hostile towards the church, they'll create legislation that'll make it harder for us to do that. We are getting to a place where legislation will be passed to persecute Christians. This is already happening in some states like California, and it's happening on, in scale in California. Daniel was thrown in the lion's den due to bad legislation, and he almost lost his life if it wasn't for God's supernatural intervention. So when Christians say we don't need to be in politics, well... It's not very wise, because you could end up in the lion's den because of politics. Let's get practical, okay? Voters say the largest issue on their mind heading into this election, 87% say it's the economy. If you do not see that this country is in a disaster economically right now, I really don't know what to say. My message to you is wake up. Wake up. Because these last three and a half years have been the worst time in my life. And this is the problem when you vote bad candidates into office, you have to reap the results. 
And the Lord has given us the last three and a half years to see the fruit of the policies that people put through. Wake up, church. Wake up. Jesus often said to people, you can't see, you can't hear. You have ears, but you're not hearing anything. You have eyes, but you can't see anything. You're blind, you're foolish. It's time to wake up. And for many of the things that I'm about to mention, and I know this is going to be a controversial statement, probably pretty upsetting to many people, it is not the time for a woman president. Not right now. It's just not. Okay, so let's take a look at Bill Mayer, who is a famous liberal and often does political commentary. And this week he released a clip that went viral about Kamala Harris. Let's take a look at it. Kamala Harris, vice president, will get all of Biden's campaign money. And on the Democrats' best issue, abortion, she's a walking reminder to women that Republicans are coming for the abortion pill. She won't just protect Plan B. She is Plan B. <laughs> And as a former prosecutor, Kamala was putting criminals in jail back before liberals decided that was a bad thing. <laughs> and now that CVS is locking the shaving cream behind plexiglass, Democrats are coming around to her again. <laughs> Harris would be the first woman president, first black woman president, and first Asian president. But I don't vote for who will be the first. I vote for who will win. And for whatever reason, Harris has never been popular. You can count the number of delegates she won in the 2020 primaries on one hand, as long as that hand has no fingers. <laughs> in three years as vice president, she's been quieter than an electric car. And, <laughs> and like an electric car, your MAGA uncle can't explain why she fills him with homicidal rage. <laughs> She just does. Sometimes life isn't fair. It's not fair that she's not popular. She's intelligent and accomplished, and in fact, was put in charge of the border. And look at how, okay, bad example. <laughs> okay, so you see in there, as funny as that was, there's a lot of truth in humor. But just in a short time period, it just completely destroyed Kamala Harris as someone that you should take serious for being the president of the United States for several different issues. We're going to take a look at that. That clip went viral this week because there's a lot of truth for what she's saying. For many reasons that I'm about to mention, it is not time for a woman president. It is just not. And I'm not against women being presidents. I personally loved Tulsi Gabbard and would have loved to see her run on the VP ticket. I love her. So it's not that I'm against women. And I would like to see one in my lifetime, to see a woman president. We see Deborah in the Bible was involved in politics. Women can be politicians, but not right now. Not in the state we're in. I'm going to take a look at many things, so you're going to want to stick with me to the end over the critical issues in this. It's not because Camilla Harris is black either. Although she is half Indian, her mother is Indian. But I think that when the time does come, the African community does deserve a fully African president, not like Kamala Harris and Obama, which are half Indian or half white. We are not ready for a woman president at this time. Now, I'm not a fan of Hillary Clinton at all, but I would actually beg to have her running at the moment because I do not question her ability. I do not question her competence. We are headed for World War III at the moment. And if things do not change, like right away, Camilla Harris does not have any experience in foreign affairs. Think about that. All of her experience is domestically. Joe Biden and Camilla Harris have been the most unpopular president and vice president in modern times. Their approval ratings are both historically low. This election should really be a no-brainer. But apparently, a lot of people have no brain. Let's take a look at... Uh, post that went viral this week on Harris and Biden's accomplishments while in office. Here is a post that went viral on Twitter. They allowed 15 million unvetted illegal immigrants into this country. Historic inflation crisis. 
record high gas prices in all 50 states, which leads to higher prices on everything. Record high consumer debt. They released terrorists into the country, dozens, possibly, if not hundreds. They knew it. They didn't care who was coming in at the border. We have the Russia-Ukraine war, the Israel-Hamas war, which in many aspects we've already entered into World War III because we have various wars and we're fighting with other countries, just not on the surface. We're fighting through technology and many other things. We have the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan where our soldiers died and they left billions of dollars worth of equipment to terrorists. We have violent crime skyrocketing in all, particularly all the major cities in the United States of America. They tried to jail political rivals in the name of democracy. This was something that was not really done on, at scale in American history. Yet this, this administration went after their political rivals. And it, brought, it didn't bring America closer together. It's brought us more divided than ever. They lied to the American public about Joe's decline. A large majority of people said that Camilla Harris knew that Joe was in decline but kept the show running. This does make her a liar. They declared war on American energy and from day one disconnected pipelines. And we have record low test scores in K-12 through students. Okay, so America ranks about 30 40th of developed nations. Out of all the developed nations, we are low in education. And that's partly because they're teaching uh, sh um, sexuality and gender to children instead of just teaching them math and science. Let's get back to common sense, people. Now, if you poll the American people in this country, headed in, if we are headed in the right direction, a large majority of Americans, I think it was about 74%, say that we aren't headed in the right direction. But what's shockingly is that Harris and Trump are basically neck and neck in the polls. Harris actually has a slight lead. So for a large majority, there's a disconnect there. Why? Because people are so stuck on their hate for the orange man that they can't see common sense reality. So please hit the like button and possibly share this. I expect this to be my least popular video because I'm talking truth because I'm getting down to issues. I don't expect this video to go viral i expect most people to click it off so i could use your help in sharing this hit the like button it's something small you can do to tell youtube to get the message out to others but let's start with the economy inflation and the prices inflation and the price of everything is increasing why is this happening because the government is overspending and they are printing money that we do not have we have an inflation crisis which is the worst since jimmy carter OK, so we're seeing here in an article released that the average American family has lost seventy four hundred dollars due to inflation rate hikes under the Biden administration. OK, and I've seen articles where it's actually a lot higher than this. This was a conservative figure. I wanted to try to be as accurate as possible. During this administration, mortgage rates have doubled and even at some point tripled. We have record high gas prices. Under the current administration, gas was $2 and change. With Trump's, with Trump, now with this administration, it's $4 and change and higher in some states like California. So when you think about it, like gas prices are just like the bottom line thing that we can gauge what's really going on. And gas prices have doubled. Which the effects, the process of everything, because our goods need to be transported. The first thing that Biden did was disconnect oil pipelines, and this shot the prices up of everything. He didn't care what this would lead to, to prices increase on everything. He didn't care that this would be disastrous for the economy. He didn't care that we were already struggling from COVID. He only cared about the green agenda because those are the people that funded it. He did not care about the American people. If he did that, he would have never disconnected those pipelines, at least right now. We have record high in consumer debt. The average American is struggling and can't make it. I saw a video that went viral the other day of a woman who explained how basically she had to go and consider between feeding her or her children. And of course, she chose her children because she just didn't have enough money to feed herself. Everything has become more expensive. And is anybody off, better off in the last three and a half years than they were? Let's sober up, people. Sober up. Wake up. This economy is a disaster. It's time for people to wake up. 
And if you hear nothing else in this video, please use common sense. This has been the worst financial times of my life. It is time to wake up. Okay? So considering that, I'm going to be working with companies in all future videos that are going to help to bring some funding to the channel. And I'm going to only work with companies that I really believe in that will offer quality products to people. I've been offered um, many different sponsorship opportunities over the last three and a half years. I've took none of them. I was just praying and waiting, saying, God, send me someone that I can work with, that I agree with, that I feel that you agree with. And so before we get into this deeper topic today, this video has been brought to you by Birch Gold, one of your most trusted sources in adding gold to your investment portfolios, 401ks and IRAs. It is a way I can help fund this ministry and offer a product I personally believe in. We are living in uncertain times and we are seeing a shaking in the stock market. The world is moving towards digital currency. The world is moving towards cryptocurrency. And the world is also moving away from the U.S. dollar or the petrodollar. One way that you can secure your financial future is to make sure that you own some gold in your portfolio, in your 401k and IRA. This is something that I'm doing personally, and I'm also bringing this to my family as well. But all securities do come with risk. I am not a financial professional, so do your due diligence. The people at Birch Gold will give you a great education on gold so that you can make an informed decision. But Trump released information on his portfolio on what he owns. And what I found shocking was Trump owned $250,000 in gold. So rich people are better at making financial decisions than the average person. And Trump knows that it's good to have that gold in his portfolio just in case of an emergency, just in case in a collapse of securities, collapse of the U.S. dollar. Physical gold will always be worth something. So you can make an informed decision and get your free gold kit today from Birch Gold. To find out how to do this, go to birchgold.com backslash torn curtain. So let's get back to the video. So the second biggest issue, so the first was the economy. The second biggest issue on people's minds were illegal immigration. Over 15 million illegal immigrants were sent into this country. And that is a small figure. Some people say more, some people say less. But that is a conservative figure. It could possibly be more. I'm here in New York City myself, and I'm in Queens, New York, which is the most ethnically diverse region in the country. We have immigrants from here from all over the country. I have many friends that are here illegally, good friends of mine that I love, that are wonderful people. The number might be even higher than 15 million. So this is not an attack on illegal immigration or illegal immigrants, okay? Some people are trying to get a better life for themselves. But the point is, is that Biden and Harris are claiming that this all isn't their fault. And this is blatant lies, because as soon as the administration took power and control, they shut down Trump's border wall because it was racist. They also defunded all of the programs that would help monitor the border. And it's just crazy. I saw in the river, the Rio Grande, that's coming into the United States. They had some buoys in there. The Biden administration took them to court and took the buoys down. So they stopped and directly put things, got them out of the way to make it easier for people to come to this country. And once immigrants knew that the border was open, it was just droves and droves of people headed towards the border. This was a disaster. It's their fault. They're liars. And they've been lying to the American people the whole time, even two years into this, saying, no, we don't have a problem at the border. We don't have a problem at the border. And then JFK Jr. goes to the border and Elon Musk goes to the border. And right as they're sitting there filming the video, people are coming across the border. And then finally a busted open when there was pictures of the, some National Guard members getting bowled over by immigrants breaking through a fence, hundreds of them, while these soldiers got trampled on the floor. 
So what they did was lied to the American public. They lied and said that they were doing everything that they could. It's just a disaster. And Camilla Harris had one job that she was tasked to her to be the border, to be the head of the border. And nobody at in control of the border is endorsing Camilla Harris or Biden. OK, because they're smart. OK, so they defended all of these policies that would bring all illegal immigrants into this country. And this has been deliberate. OK, I could come up with several different reasons, but the most important question is we know that they're doing it. We know that it's happening on scale. We know millions of people coming in. The question that nobody's asking is, why are they doing this? And the truth is, there are several different theories. Um, but one particular theory that caught my attention, and I'm not saying it's true, it's just something to think about. I personally think that they are trying to collapse the economy deliberately, that the government gives so much aid and so much finance to these immigrants that America will join a global community of nations so they can start a one world government. I know that seems extreme. I know that seems crazy, honestly. But the truth is, is this just ain't sustainable. So I spoke with a friend of mine who is an immigration attorney and a law school professor. And I didn't expect to really, uh, for that conversation to really go well. But I said to her, let's talk about this on a small scale. Let's talk about this practically. So we sat down and I said, listen, let's just say I have a little extra room in my apartment here in New York City. And I wanted to take one or two people to live with me. Okay, because I have this extra space. Maybe some of us could sleep on the floor or whatever. OK, cram really into the apartment. But the truth is, is I could only help one or two people. I couldn't help a dozen people. I just don't have the room. You don't have the plumbing. You don't have the bathrooms. You don't have everything. My apartment is not set up for 15 people to live in. So the truth is, is that we could help some people out. OK, but we can't help everybody. out. And so this it was a small example that I was trying to say to her. And I was shocked that she actually agreed with me. We can help some people out. We can't help everybody. When my answers came from Germany, Italy, Ireland, and many other places, there was no government assistance. There was no, the government didn't give you anything. So they came here. It was either sink or swim with some few dollars that they had in their pocket. So the Statue of Liberty says, give me your tired masses. But the truth is, is it's a totally different time than at the time of the Statue of Liberty. Now, illegal immigrants are given packages that are up to $60,000 per year. And we cannot do this at scale. We cannot do this for 15 million people. It will collapse the government. This is common sense. This is basic economics. We want to have hearts of compassion for people. Jesus had compassion for people. Jesus talked about taking care of the poor and the alien, etc., we need to have hearts of compassion. But the other part of that statement is hearts of compassion, but backbones of steel. We need to think and take into account truth and common sense as well. So as much as we have hearts of compassion, we need to have backbones of steel that this is not sustainable at scale. We can help some people out. We can't help everybody out. Why? Because who will pay for all of this? I remember when Bernie Sanders was running for president, and basically, he was highly like figure. Joe Rogan endorsed him. And he said, I'm going to give people free health care. We're going to give people free college. We're going to give all these things out for free. And the question you're left with is, Bernie, those are great ideas. People like it. Okay. But the truth is, is how is everyone going to pay for all of this? And the truth is, is it wasn't very clear how Bernie was going to pay for this. So we see all these immigrants coming in illegally. The truth is, is how are we going to pay for all of this? And the truth is, the American taxpayer is going to pay for this. And the truth is, the American taxpayer is already struggling. And the truth is that we have veterans in this, in this United States that are still struggling. A friend of mine that works for the Veterans Association is a doctor at a hospital. Okay, A lot of those veterans really need resources and different things. And these are people that have lost limbs, been shot for this country. They should really be put before other people. Now, I'm here in New York City, so I'm getting a front row seat to all of this. The immigrants are given cash and lots of it, free cell phones, debit card, food stamps, and child care. Meanwhile, many people in America that are citizens that have been here their whole life can't seem to get child care. When the immigrants go to the hospital, 
this will also be passed on to the taxpayer because they don't have insurance. So this is not sustainable, folks. It's not. And I have compassion for these people. I really do. I've been around them. I've tried to minister to them and help them whenever I could. But the truth is, is I'm a human being with limited resources, and this government has limited resources. So do you know who this affects all the most? It's going to affect minority communities. There are many people in the United States of America who are below the poverty line or around it. And the truth is, is that they're going to struggle even more because the resources that should be going to them are going to end up going to the migrants, people that haven't paid any taxes. The African American community in New York City is getting very vocal about this because they say, hey, wait a minute. I can't believe this is going on. You're given these resources that should have been going to us and is going to people that haven't paid anything in taxes. So we're abandoning people in America that have paid taxes, that have lived there their whole life, and the aid is going to illegal immigrants. In New York City, they released the financial figures this week that they've spent $5 billion in 2023 on housing illegal immigrations and all the costs that are associated with it. Mayor Eric Adams is on record saying this will collapse the state's financial budget. We are in an emergency. We need very serious help. And Biden and the federal government turned around and go, we can't help you. So this is just insanity at all another level. Now talk about having compassion because we want to have compassion. Jesus had compassion. Have you been to a migrant hotel? I have. They're stuffed into these small places like sardines in a can. And if you see the way that they live, this is just disgusting because hotel rooms really aren't the places that people should really be living in. They're really just to spend a short amount of time in. And on top of this, we really have no way to integrate these people into societies, to get them into the job market, etc. I know in my area here in New York City, what a lot of the illegal immigrants do is they chop up fruit, put them in these plastic cases, and they sell water by the side of the highway. There is a woman in my neighborhood and several of them that sell these products by the side of the highway with babies on their back. Some of them more than one. They strap them with like elastic bands around their back so they can sell this fruit. Is that humane? Is that the way that people should live? Is it humane for a person to live like that, spending all day in the sun, sometimes 15 hours? That's not humane. And this is happening in my neighborhood. A lot of people don't see this because they don't live in a metro area, but me living in a metro area. Listen, my, I have a heart of compassion for the immigrants. I have hearts of compassion for these people. I really do. But this situation is totally out of control. So it's just not humane to do this to them. And on top of this, there we have 10 million immigrants who are already in this country, some of them that are my friends that happened before this migrant crisis. And there's no way for them, there's no real path for them to get citizenship. So the immigrants that are already here spoke to one or two people are kind of upset because and it, their situation isn't stable. They don't know how they're ever going to get integrated to America. Not to mention now we have 15 more illegal immigrants. Okay, so the last part about this is terrorism. Okay, there are known terrorists that are getting caught at the border. Some of them are being caught. Some of them aren't. <clears throat> and recently, we've seen a few dozen of them being that they found out later snuck into the country and were known terrorists. Dozens and hundreds of known terrorists, criminals and different people. Okay, and when Trump mentions this type of stuff, he gets labeled a racist. Now, he needs to use better terminology the way that he talks about some of these countries it's just really terrible. He needs to do a better job on communicating the thing. But the truth is, some really dangerous people are heading into our country. And because I'm here in New York City, you, a lot of people have not seen a terrorist attack on American soil. I saw two buildings collapse in the Trade Center from the front door of my house, saw the smoke stack. So I know what it's like to have terrorists attack this country and to see thousands of people die and missing. It's just a disaster. So I'm very concerned about terrorism. I'm very concerned about the people that are coming into this country. A lot of them are military age men. A lot of them might be from our enemies. Just let that sink in, people. 
It's time for people to wake up. It's time for people to wake up. It's time for people to come back to common sense. This immigration situation might be the worst domestic failure in American history in my lifetime as someone who studied history. Okay, so the first two reasons were the economy is a disaster, immigration is out of control, leading some of these cities possibly to collapse like New York and California. And the third reason is we are headed towards World War III and geopolitical turmoil. The situation right now on the world stage is the worst as it's been since World War II or the Cuban Missile Crisis. We are headed towards World War III. There are several different wars going on right now and a few of them brewing. Let's just take a look at a top geopolitical advisor, John Mersheimer, who's going to talk about Camilla Harris, and he is a liberal, and talk about her experience on a geopolitical level. Let's roll the film. I would just start off by saying that it's difficult to tell at this point what the consequences of having Kamala Harris as the presidential candidate will mean. Uh, she's not a person who said very much about foreign policy. She's not a very experienced person. And it's just very hard to tell at this juncture how um, well she will do against Trump and Vance. Mm. You can make an argument that a, a Democrat with the right message who can really campaign uh, could beat Trump in Vance. But on the other hand, uh, Kamala Harris has zero experience running as president. Uh, she was not good uh, when she ran as a candidate in the primaries in 2020 and she has not done a good job as vice president there's just no question about that she had very strained relations with the white house uh and the few things that she did for the administration especially with regard to handling borders and immigration she did not do very well so this is not a person that one can just right off the bat have a lot of confidence in uh in terms of her ability to uh run a contest against uh, Trump over the next 15 weeks. Uh, assuming that she runs uh, a, good, uh, uh, a good campaign, the question is, what are her policy views? I think she's basically going to be more of Biden. Uh, I think that's due in part to the fact that she has never been an independent voice on foreign policy. Domestic politics has been her forte. She'll be heavily dependent on her advisors, and her advisors will be basically... Uh, from the same camp that uh, Joe Biden's advisors are from. This is a person, Kamala Harris, who has hardly any experience in foreign policy, mm -hmm. has never had independent views. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, she's thrust into uh, this contest where she's the presidential candidate from the Democratic Party, and she has only 15 weeks to wage the campaign. Mm -hmm. Even if she agreed with you, do you think she's in a position politically uh, mm. to execute the sort of policy switch that you describe, uh, say to what you've just said? But uh, I just think if you look at the sort of context in which she's operating, she has mm. hardly any room for maneuver on the foreign policy front. Okay, so you're seeing there John Mersheimer, a geopolitical strategist. Many people suggest he's one of the top in the country, and he leans more real liberal. But he's basically saying here, in a nutshell, that Camilla Harris has no experience. She has 15 weeks to wage a cane campaign where she's going to be primarily focused on the United States of America and winning the election, and she's going to inherit a very complicated geopolitical situation and she has no experience so not to mention that it's the biden administration that got us in a lot of these disasters to begin with okay so i think what helped a lot was trump had that unpredictable card where people were just so scared of him and what he might do that they decided listen let's not push let's not push the envelope with this guy he might blow us off the face of the planet and that's sometimes where leading with strength really can come out to help you in the long run. I know Roosevelt said, uh, talk soft and carry a big stick. Okay, so there's some 
precedence for leading out of strength, which could possibly divert a lot of the disasters that we have. Um, Putin has only invaded different territories while the Democrats are in office. Okay, because they choose to really deal with things more through diplomacy and not through warfare. But um, the truth is, is we got a very complicated situation geopolitically, and we're headed for World War III. Um, this all started with the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, which they left billions of dollars in military equipment to terrorists. Americans lost their lives. It was the biggest political blunder since the Bay of Pigs. It was a disaster, and China and Russia and many other of our enemies started laughing at us when they saw how incompetent this administration was. Shortly after that, Russia started, uh, you know, lining up troops on the Ukrainian border, and we saw this for weeks and months, and Biden done nothing. And then this war broke out. So Putin, again, has only pushed these type of buttons with Democrats. And he did the same with Obama. He now did the same thing with Biden. Notice he did not do that on Trump's watch. I think people were just too scared of what he might do. Then we had the situation in Israel with the Israel-Hamas war. And the truth is, is that's a very, very serious situation, even some ways more dangerous than Russia and Ukraine. It's a situation that has caused mass protest all over the United States of America and basically which then in turn brought com communist ideology in full view for us to all see. When did our country get filled with communists in our top universities? So much to the fact that so many of these universities ended up firing staff in universities because the ideology that was coming out of these universities was so radical. And what brought this all to the surface? The Israel-Hamas war. Okay, so it has implications domestically as well as foreignly. It's a very serious situation. The end times is going to really revolve around this tiny little nation that's smaller than the size of New Jersey, but is surrounded by hostile nations that are hostile uh, to the Jewish people. And they're filled and have all of this land for Arabs and the Muslim faith. And this tiny little land that they have, just a tiny little strip of land, is... Uh, what's going to be debated if you go there yourself, which I recommend you do. It's a beautiful place right off the coast of the Mediterranean. It's just gorgeous. And you could see why there is so much conflict over this land. It's a very special place to visit. But that will that situation is never going away, regardless of what president is in office. Okay, so those are the top three reasons. But I'll give you another fourth one. Crime rate. Okay. So what happened was I was lobbying in Washington, D.C. with some politician. Grace Mang is a congresswoman from New York, and she's Asian-American and just, just a really nice, wonderful person. She is a Democrat, but uh, just got a chance to work with her. And while we were there, while we were talking, I got to meet with other people that were in Congress. And that week, two or three of the people in Congress who were Democrats uh, soft on crime type policies had been robbed in Washington, D.C. One was carjacked and one had been a victim of violent crime. They flipped so quickly when the crime showed up at their door that they started right away moving away from their defund the police movement, etc., etc. Because these politicians are often sheltered from real life. OK, and when it finally hits their neighborhood, they start shifting policies real quick. So it should be noted that President Obama has a pretty large mansion. And while the whole thing with Trump's wall was going down, he was erecting a wall around the premises of his property. OK, so a lot of these politicians will put up walls around their property, have private security, et cetera, et cetera. But we can't put walls around this country to keep us safe, um, to make sure that if people do come here and we're going to help people out, that um, they're coming in here legally and we know who they are. So it's just basically. But yeah, so the illegal immigration has caused the crime rates to go up. Most illegal immigrants are good people, hardworking people. Many of them are Catholic, especially if they're coming from South America. Good, quiet people. Okay. I've worked in companies that had illegal immigrants, particularly in the restaurant business. Wonderful people, hard work, funny people, spirited people. I am not bashing illegal immigrants. 
At the same time, there is a small group of them that will commit violent crimes, and we're seeing that in New York City here. Matter of fact, they beat a police officer in Times Square, and I do worship ministry and outreach within Times Square, and basically they beat a police officer in broad daylight, seven different, several different immigrants, and New York City let them off the hook, okay, release them on bail, etc. So we see these crime rates already were out of control. Then the immigrant, you add the immigrant factor in this, they, uh, you know, also added more to the crime rate going up, okay? So again, many immigrants are hardworking people, but they're also dangerous people that we let into this country too. A lot of them are involved with gangs like MS-13. So the Black Lives Matter riots caused um, the police to stand down. They started seeing a lot of defund the police movements, and we have seen the result of that in the last three and a half years. We have seen the result of that now, and... A lot of politicians are moving away from defund the police. Biden came out um, almost from day one and said, we're, we're not supporting defunding the police. It's just common sense practices. But what happened is, is it did weak the authority of police to respond to situations. And in New York City, uh, I've talked to many police officers and the morale is just there. They know that they're going to release the criminals anyway. So what is the point of going out of their way to arrest people that the court session is just going to leave out? So we have these soft on crime policies, which in turn lead to this crime spiraling out of control, particularly in big cities like San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, Detroit, different places like that. And um, even in just in um, in a few states, they've totally taken over with this homelessness and, and mentally ill people walk in the streets. I'm here in New York, a lifetime New Yorker. And. Uh, the city got cleaned up pretty well, but we have taken steps back 30 years, in my personal opinion. It's gone back to where it was in the 80s, where I remember as a little kid kind of just keeping my head down in the car in certain neighborhoods, and um, that's how bad it was. Well, it's getting back to that place. So we've taken huge steps back due to soft on crime policies, anti-police sentiment, etc., and the courts allowing criminals to rule and reign. A lot of them mentally ill. So we're facing very serious situation with crime. And a lot of uh, people have been killed by illegal immigrants in this country. In New York City, um, the two different women were raped. Okay, one in the Bronx. I think both of them were in the Bronx recently by migrants. Again, I'm not bashing migrants. I'm just saying that uh, this crime situation is out of control, especially in New York City. Okay, so basically, it's a really, really bad and serious situation. And unfortunately, until the crime happens to someone you know or you love, it doesn't really hit the fan. Okay, you won't experience it until your safety is put on the line. I do a lot of working out outside, a lot of praying outside. And one night I was with my bike and, you know, basically I, I came within inches of, of being robbed. Thank God. I just knew that something was off in this situation. Saw that someone moving to me was able to get on my bike right before they pulled out something. It was either a gun or a knife. And it just and it, if I had re delayed even a second later, uh, I would have probably been seriously hurt. And then I started saying, this is out of control. This is, a, this is a very serious situation. So a lot of time, unless you are a personal victim of crime, you don't get this. And so America is starting to wake up to see that this anti-police sentiment, this defund the police, this the crime rates are out of control, that this is not working. And they're coming back to sanity. They're coming back to reality. Okay, so basically we're not like the politicians. They have private security cameras, walls around their house, and we're average persons. So the policies they pass are going to fall into our lap, not theirs. Okay, so real quickly, um, making videos like this, um, YouTube will demonetize a lot of my videos or take them down. Social media age, um, Christians like me are being centered. I know I will be canceled at some point on some platforms. It's just a matter of time. So basically, I have different social media accounts. So I'd love to connect with you on a few different platforms because I anticipate that at some point they will take the channel down. So I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Rumble. So I want to connect with you on other platforms. I also have an email list for people so I can stay in contact with you guys. So if you 
really like the ministry, sign up for the email list. You can check that in the description below the video. I'd love to connect with you on other platforms. They're censoring Christians. They're censoring any message that doesn't go with the narrative. So I just want to connect with everybody, my audience, on all different platforms. So I put abortion way down in the list. Um, of course, I'm anti-abortion, always been my whole entire life. Although when I was in junior high school, I was on a debate team and uh, the professor of that team made me argue the case for abortion. And uh, I didn't have a choice. I didn't see, <laughs> I didn't realize I had civil rights back then and did and won the debate. But the truth is, is I am against abortion. I think that Roe v. Wade uh, being overturned was one of the greatest political victories in my lifetime. I couldn't even believe it. I was stunned. A lot of people said that this would happen, that it was bad law, that it was just a matter of time for it to be overturned. And Trump, for all his, um, for all his character defects, for all of his narcissism and immaturity, there were some really amazing things that he able to do, and Roe v. Wade was one of them. No other president would have got this overturned. So they basically turned abortion back to the states for each state to make their decision. But the Democrats are going to, they've said this outright, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, they will try to look to overturn the recent rulings and to get abortion legalized again. They will fight against it. They will look to have this overturned. They will bring it to the Supreme Court. A matter of fact, they're even working on the, to um, basically make all of these rules and regulations to change the rules on the Supreme Court, because now the Supreme Court is stacked with conservatives because Trump appointed three conservative justices. And that's probably the only reason why this country is hanging together right now, because the Supreme Court is has a backbone and logic behind all of this. And it's one of the few things that's holding our country together because Trump appointed those three Supreme Court justices. But even states like uh, New York and California, they didn't just pass abortion, but they're passing late term abortions. And not even that, but they were celebrating at this fact. Abortion is demonic. They say that there's about 60 to 80 million abortions in American history, and a large majority of them are African-American. And the truth is, is that this wiped out a whole generation of African-American children that could have totally changed the demographics of the United States of America. And so in many ways, uh, if, you know, uh, they're saying that 75% of those babies were African-American, if they were still here, those 60 million, it had changed the demographics of uh, the, the whole entire nation. And, we, and, and the African-American community would have a lot more representation, a lot more politicians, a lot more lawyers and doctors, et cetera, et cetera. So abortion is a major, major issue. The Democrats are a are for abortion. The Republicans are against it. And the truth is, is Biden has come out and said he personally doesn't believe in abortion as a Catholic, but he wants people to have access to abortion as uh, the American public. So the truth is, is they are against abortion and Camilla Harris will work to overturn the recent uh, laws in abortion to make sure that it's legal, et cetera, et cetera. Another reason to cover the LGTV situation. I can't say the full word, so I'm using uh, that word instead. They'll censor the video, they'll take it down. But the truth is the LGTV situation has totally spiraled out of control. As soon as Biden got into office, it opened up the floodgates of hell in this nation because he started right away putting trans certain rights into law, et cetera, et cetera. I love to work out. It's like a hobby of mine. But the last time I was in a gym, I heard a woman screaming in the bathroom and we all ran over to see what it was, me and the gym manager. And it just so happened that a man with a beard decided that he wanted to be a woman and go in and get naked in the woman's locker room. And the manager did not stop him. And there were several women that came out crying. And I said, I'm done. Never went to the gym since that day. I'm done with it. I'm not going to face situations like this. This is just this is just wrong on every single level. Well, 
basically this administration, the Biden administration, the Harris administration passed all sorts of laws along that fact, pushing this in athletics, pushing this on children. The truth is, is <clears throat> what two consenting adults want to do in this country Um LGTV marriage is legal. You can marry whoever you want. You have the freedom to do that. You can even get uh, health care for your spouses in this country. But the truth is, when I draw the lines, when they started pushing this on kids, when drag queens were reading storybooks to little children that were sexually graphic in nature, and that's when I say, no, 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 no. Not today, Satan. Not on my watch. It's not going to happen. And so we saw this happen during the Biden administration. This is demonic to the core. It is probably my main reason why I could never vote a uh, Democrat moving forward is because it's not that they're just trying to, st it's, it's just turned into a total, total sharkus. This is another reason why I feel that Christians can't vote LBGTQ. They can't vote Democrat. They can't vote liberal because of this particular agenda. I think it's even more demonic than even abortion, although they're both really demonic and terrible. But for me, uh, the LGTV situation is more important to me than even the other one, because the truth is, is I just see this changing the youth, affecting the youth of this nation, the little kids. I don't have children myself, but I have two young God daughters, and I want to fight for them that they could grow up in a nation and they can grow up in schools that's not going to teach them about this stuff. Whatever adults want to do when they're 18 years old and they're an adult and they want to learn about this stuff, they would have the right to do so, but they're pushing this on children. And that's where it's time to stand up and say, no, 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 no. So again, it went from grown adults having the right to what they want to do and this is America, but when they push this on children, that's it. Okay, so this isn't about hate either. I wanted to say this. Christians are called to love everybody. Um, I love the LGTV community. Jesus does. We are, even as Christians, to love our enemies. Okay, um, I, I think the churches should open our doors to that community and open up love and mercy and grace and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. We're all sinners who are saved by grace. It doesn't matter if that sin is heterosexual or homosexual in nature. All of us. No matter who you are, we must all repent from our sins and find forgiveness and reconciliation through Jesus' death on the cross. doesn't matter who you are. We must all turn from our sins, heterosexual, homosexual. So basically, whatever it is, we are all called to turn away from our own sin. Some of those are sexual in nature, some of them aren't. Okay, so basically, yeah, the truth is, is I'm not bashing here. Okay, I think Jesus loves and made all his creation in his image to worship him, to be in relationship with him. And we can either choose to, to go down that path or not. I feel that marriage is between one man and one woman and that there are only two genders. Okay, those are my personal convictions. I wouldn't try to force that on other people either. But that doesn't mean that I hate anybody. That doesn't mean that I hate the LGTV community. As a matter of fact, I love the LGTV community. And I'm on this ministry going to do everything that I can to reach out to them. It's one of my callings. I taught a Bible study in the local church for that community. It was one of the most fantastic and fun things I've ever done. There was not a single second of boredom in that Bible study, and it was just tremendous. Saw a couple of people come out of the lifestyle and embrace truth, freedom in Jesus Christ. So we're just standing confirm on our religious convictions, but just because we disagree with the LGDV community does not mean we hate people. We've got to this place in society where if you disagree with someone or stand up for your values, they try to come back and say that you must hate. No, Christians are never called to hate. A matter of fact, it says if you hate people, um, the love of God is not in you. So the floodgates have opened up on this current administration for the LGTV situation, which has spiraled out of control. It even made its way to the Olympics with one man had his testicles hanging out, and it was just disgusting on live TV. Okay, so this is just, uh, it's just wrong on every single level, and this has happened. It started under Obama's time clock, but then really Biden got in. Nobody really voted for Biden anyway. He didn't campaign. He stayed in the basement. Nobody voted for him. 
Okay, people just didn't want Trump, to be honest. And the truth is, he gets in office, you'd think that he would just stay quiet and just, you know, knowing that nobody really voted for him, they just didn't want the other candidate. Joe Biden was a, a total gaffe machine. Okay, so before he was the vice president, he just constantly said dumb things. Even Obama really distanced himself from him. He was just constantly saying goofy and silly things on television. He was the goofiest president since Gerald Ford, who seemed to fall a lot on camera. And the truth is, is you think he would have just stayed quiet? No, Biden got radical and decided that he was going to push the LGTV community to... He was going to push a radical agenda, and Camilla Harris will be even more radical. She's on camera saying these things flout outright. And the last thing that we're going to cover here today, which is probably one of the most concerning because it infiltrates all levels of society, is the emergence of socialism and communism in the United States of America. And this has taken many different forms, okay? So the truth is, if you want a socialist nation, you can move to Canada, Sweden, Denmark. But the truth is, is nobody's doing that. OK, so people don't like America, um, but they're not moving to these socialist nations. They're staying here. Uh, part of the reason is, is because once you get to those socialist nations, you're going to pay 30, 40 percent in tax. Your whole salary is going to go to supporting all of these programs that you're getting. But people aren't doing that. Canada actually has a huge, huge uh, campaign to try to get people to move there and nobody wants to go. It's, it's turning socialist. They're arresting Christians. Uh, they're persecuting Christians there already. Some of the Christians are dumb. I'm not going to be honest. Some of them are just doing stupid stuff and then getting arrested. But the truth is, is that this is not a socialist nation. America is not a socialist nation. As a matter of fact, we had a point called McCarthyism where anybody that even just hinted of communism was like tarred and feathered. And now we've come to the place where socialism and communism have infiltrated this country. And the truth is, is they've even infiltrated the church. Okay, so they've infiltrated the universities here in America. This is done deliberately. Okay, left wing radicals or have infiltrated the courts. Um, they're making sure they will appoint radical DAs that are soft on crime. They've infiltrated uh, American universities. They've even infiltrated social justice movements, etc. And now they're influencing the church. There is communist and socialist ideology that has become in on the church wide scale. There was a particular well-known church that I was a part of with well-known pastors. If I said their names, you would know who they are, that I had to leave because they were teaching critical race theory or critical theory um, right from the pulpit, etc., standing up for BLM and several other different things. And I just knew that I had to really slam this, stand up against it and leave that church. OK, so the truth is, is they've infiltrated the church. There's a huge book that came out this week called Shepherds for Sale by Megan Basham. OK, and what she's chronicling is that basically these organizations wanted to create a radical left agenda in the United States of America, but they couldn't do it because the church was standing in the way. The evangelicals standing in the way. There's somewhere between 80 to 100 evangelicals, 100 million evangelicals in the United States of America. And because of that, these radicals, these leftists, socialists and communists could not infiltrate their policies because the church was standing in the way. So this book, Shepherds for Sale, talks about how they said, okay, George Soros and the founder of eBay, et cetera, start saying, okay, let's work to influence pastors. And if we can influence pastors, then they'll influence their congregation. And now we are seeing critical race theory, socialism, communism right from the pulpits to the fact that I had to stand up against a former church, to stand up against the ministers, to say you are wrong, this is wrong, it has no place in the pulpit. Critical race theory is socialist and communist. It has no place in the churches whatsoever. We should stand up for racial justice. We should stand up for the poor and the marginalized. We don't do it with communist ideologies. Communism and Christianity are not, they're not compatible. Communist wants to remove God, and God will become the government. The church believes that Jesus Christ 
is the is is the government and we should have freedom and liberty to follow God to pursue our dreams etc so they're incompatible yet we saw this and now hundreds of churches so America is a post christian nation that ship has sailed but now they have infiltrated the churches and America probably has one last generation before its total collapse and it's because the radical left has infiltrated society Okay, so basically, yeah, so we're seeing so socialism, communists take over this country. I think other nations are probably involved in that. That stuff is also tied to pro-abortion. It's tied to pro-LGTV. It's tied to BLM. It's tied to these movements. Black Lives Matter is a, a Marxist organization. They are a, a communist organization. They believe in the dismantling of the nuclear family. And uh, I know a lot of people were saying in the church world, well, I, I don't, my pastor tried to pull this one, well, I don't believe in Black Lives Matter, the organization. We just are, a, but we do believe in Black Lives Matter, the statement. And I say, nah, because there's demonic ideology coming out of that. Why don't we just stand for social justice? Let's totally remove that name. It's a communist Marxist organization that wants the dismantling of the nuclear family. And it's they're partnering with demons, okay? Not to mention that there's magic and witchcraft involved in the Black Lives Matter movement, incantations, etc., the summoning of spirits, etc., that few people are really aware of. But also with the communism, socialism is an anti-American sentiment and an anti-police sentiment, an anti-authority sentiment. Now, the truth is, is that there are some bad police, okay, and that, that is something that needs to be worked on. We need to work on making sure that people don't die unnecessarily. Um, you know, I don't want to see any more young African-American males die at the hands of police. And so we need to work on reform and justice and change in that area. At the same time, um, the way to do that is not through communist and socialist ideologies. So we want to stand up for social justice. Martin Luther King Jr. is one of my heroes, one of the greatest Americans that ever lived. I think the greatest American other than George Washington who has ever lived. And the truth is, is he believed in social justice, but his whole theory behind it was because God loves people and they were created in his image and that they were that, that God's image was in people, that that was his idea behind social justice, not communism and uh, socialism, even though Martin Luther King was a socialist. But his ideas uh, behind the social justice were biblical in nature and about God's love for people. A lot of this stuff is about just uh, returning hate for hate. So we're seeing this socialism and communism take over America. It's deliberately done by very wealthy people that are working to sway the church and this country. And, you know, I'm hoping that America could survive in my lifetime, but I'm starting to see that I don't see that as an option. I think America is probably will not survive my lifetime. So I'd like to see it survive, but if you try to dismantle authority, if you spread an anti-American sentiment, and again, we have done things in our past that need to be acknowledged, there are definitely some dark stains in America as um, that we need to deal with, that we need to acknowledge, particularly slavery. But the truth is, is America has also done some uh, some really good things, and I can't think of another nation in world history that I would rather be a part of than this country. But that doesn't mean that we're perfect or that we don't have issues that we need to deal with. But there are many in this country, U.S. citizens who hate the country. And as soon as that starts happening, you know it's a matter of time before this will collapse. So America might get its social justice. It might get its pro-LGTV. It might get all of those things, but it might collapse at the same time as well. So basically, yeah. So the truth is, is we want to be ones for reformation. We don't want to be revolutionary, revolutionaries. Revolutionaries want to destroy everything and burn it down um, to the ground. Reformers want to change and make changes. And so what we need to do in America is we need to bring reformation. We don't need to change it and burn it down to the ground. But there are many people in this country that would love America to be brought down so they could bring in all of this. 
So listen, please comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, your questions. I love um, reading the questions. Um, let me know if you're watching from another country. I've had about 40, 50 different nations view the videos, and I really appreciate that. Uh, I'll do my best reply to, for the comments that come in for the first day or two, So, but I can't answer every comment at this point. But I really appreciate your comments. And so let me just give a quick summary on some of the highlights about this election coming up and then we'll close the video but the truth is is um there are many things that i'm very concerned about in this next election the economy is one and inflation is one um camilla harris said the other day well as soon as she gets into office she's going to fix it and i guess she didn't realize how that that wasn't very smart to say that because they said well you've had the last three and a half years to fix it so what are you talking about? You've been in power. You've been in power. What do you mean you're going to fix it? So she kind of you know, hung herself with her own comments. But the truth is, is the economy and inflation are out of control. We have geopolitical issues that are bringing us closer to World War III than ever. We have several different conflicts going on right now, several different wars. We have the immigration situation that was directly 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 involved with with biden and harris to drop the ball harris had the task of taking over that and it actually spiraled out of control to the point where it, 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 this country might be finished just as a result of this long term okay because if we're gonna have to fund 15 million people for 20 years it that might be the end of our country they also implemented a radical lgtv agenda they will also overturn abortion, and they will also implement socialist and Marxist policies, which are anti-American, anti-police, anti-Israel. And lastly, we have the high crime rates that are in rocketing, skyrocketing in all cities across the board. So I think all of these things point to the fact that uh, we need to go more on, um, we need to be more conservative, we need to vote conservatives into office i think because of all of these issues and i think there's only one choice for the upcoming election there's only one choice really and if you're a mature spirit-filled christian i think the window is really shink sinking on being able to vote democrat and still be a christian it's not totally impossible but it's getting harder and harder um, because of the radical left agenda so basically, yeah. So let me just say this. As I thought about it a long time, and this upset, it might be upsetting people, but as Bible-believing Christians, if we follow biblical prophecy, we know that the end times will come. We are officially in the state of the end times. It started at Pentecost, right, with, with Peter's preaching. But there will come an end of end times, which will bring in an Antichrist and a one-world government. The Antichrist will be the head of that government. All of the nations will join together. And you won't be able to buy or sell anything without the mark of the beast. It will be totally government control over all the nations, over every tribe, tongue, will worship the, the beast and have the mark of the beast. And so as I thought about it, which political party will work to partner with the Antichrist and a one world government? Would it be the Democratic Party who wants more government and more government control and more government spending or the Republican Party that wants freedom and liberty and give you the freedom to join in on the American dream? You know what the answer to that question is? There's one particular party which is going to party with the spirit of the Antichrist and try to destroy America to take us down to enter into a global government, a one world government. A one world system where the leader of that government will be the Antichrist and the Democratic Party will be the one that partners with them. Okay, doesn't mean that the Republican side has our own share of issues and sins. In particular, uh, you know, a lot of people that are conservatives could be heartless. And I like what President George Bush said we need to be compassionate conservatives. So we need to be conservatives that want to keep things the way they are, but be compassionate towards people. And that's where I tend to lean. I think we should have compassion on the poor, the marginalized, the oppressed, the people that are struggling. At the same time, we need to provide a structure for them to be able to succeed. 
So I'm going to close the video by just giving a shout out to some of my monthly partners. I couldn't do this without them for three years. I've been funding this ministry myself. I'm losing so much money doing this channel. I can't continue to do it. So I just thank you so much for people that decided to become monthly partners either here on YouTube by hitting the join button or people that have joined me on Patreon. Getting a monthly subscription so I could keep revenue in this organization to keep continue doing what I'm doing. I wanted to just thank Pastor Mike Henderson, who's a wonderful pastor who does some great Bible teaching himself, and it's just such a privilege to be followed by him, for him to be a monthly partner, Dina Boaz, Shorty Maggie, and Susan Crinenton. Okay, I've also become monthly partners, and I just thank you so much, guys. I couldn't do that without you. Recently, uh, Julie gave me $100 on PayPal. I really appreciate you guys. I really appreciate the support. So if you'd like to just give a one-time donation for the video so I can continue to do videos like that, you could just hit the Give button on YouTube or look down in the description to give a one-time uh, donation via PayPal or Zelle. And if you really like the content and been following me for months, then um, hit the join tab or go to Patreon. Monthly partners will get extra perks. I can interact with you a little bit closer. Um, but I cannot do this ministry long term without getting more monthly supporters and more help. So that is greatly appreciated. Let me close today with this. I'm going to actually let me close with a prayer for this nation. But before I do so, please comment, share like the video, comment on the video. I want to hear your thoughts, but uh, we'll close here with um, a prayer for this nation. So, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God. You, We say in Scripture that we are to pray for our government and our government officials. So we pray for the current leadership of the United States of America, the Senate, the House, the Supreme Court justices, everyone who is in current leadership of this country, Father, we pray that you would give them wisdom and insight to rule properly. For those that aren't living up to you, that they would repent and turn to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Give them grace and mercy for the behalf of the American people. We pray for Joe Biden and Camilla Harris right now, God, that the rest of their time in office, that you would give them wisdom, insight, and revelation. I also pray that you would remove them from office, Father, for their radical agendas and the deliberate destruction of this country. Remove them from office. And Lord, if they don't repent, let the judgment that you have come down upon them and three generations downward. Lord, we ask you right now for Americans, for the average people to wake up. God, wake us up, God. Help us to be able to see the spiritual battle that we're in. Help us to have discernment, God, to see light and darkness, to be able to see, God, what's really happening behind the scenes, to get in contact with your heart, to get in contact with what you want us to do for this next election. God, both sides of the political party have their sins, have their strengths and weaknesses, God. Both sides of the party have their issues. Both political candidates in this election have their issues, Lord. None of them are perfect. God, but we pray that you would just give us the wisdom and knowledge and revelation to be able to know how to vote, to know what to do in this upcoming election, because, because there is so much at stake in this election. Because this country cannot survive at the current rate that it's going much longer. Just financially, just because of the situations going on in the world. Lord, we need your wisdom like ever before. We need your help like never before. We need your help for this country. And Lord, I pray most of all that your kingdom is above politics. Your kingdom is above this world, is above Camilla Harris, is above Donald Trump. In Jesus' name, your kingdom come. Let your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come. Let it be done, you Trump politics, you Trump politicians. Your kingdom will know no end. Your government will know no end. Your government is perfect, Lord. We pray with the cry, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus, come. 
We pray for your return. We pray for the coming of your kingdom, which will be the only perfect kingdom, which would be the only perfect government. And I'm just going to close tonight with 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, my people, the church, Christians, will humble themselves, will repent, will turn from their wicked ways, will seek my face, the Lord says he will come and he will heal our land. He will heal this land. God, we pray right now that all of us would turn and repent, humble ourselves and turn and repent and follow Jesus Christ, that we would follow you, God, that we would turn from all darkness and follow you, that we would repent and examine ourselves and look to you, that, God, that we would not rely on the flesh and our own wisdom, but we would look to you, repenting to you. And if we turn to you with our whole hearts, you will heal us. You will heal this nation. So there is always hope. Until Jesus returns, until you return, Lord, we are going to be busy and occupy until you return. We're going to be busy doing your work. In Jesus' name, amen. So this was the longest video I've done so far. I probably won't make a video this long again, but this um, is such a serious topic. It required to do a long video. So before I close, Christianity is three things. It's to love God with your whole heart, mind, and soul. And to take that love goes inward, it changes you, it transforms you, and then you take that love and you go outward. So when we love God truly, we will love other people the same. We will love sinners. We'll love the LGTV community. We'll love our family, even the difficult people. We'll love the difficult people on our job. We love God. Then we're going to love people. They're mutually exclusive. They're mutually exclusive. They cannot be divorced. If we love God, we will love people. And then thirdly, the third one is to go out into all the world to preach the gospel as Jesus said, to tell everybody about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that he, was, he died and he rose again in order to defeat sin, to death, the grave, guilt, and shame. We are risen again to new life with Jesus Christ. We could have a relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. We could have eternal life, be set free and forgiven for our sins. And we can have a purpose in this life to go out and to spread your message, the gospel message throughout the world, which is the Great Commission to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thanks for watching today. Be blessed.